It's Megyn Kelly time. Now, after years of gushing and defensive coverage, even the woke US media seems to be starting to have enough of the ultra-privileged Sussex relentless pleas for sympathy. Even the British-hating former newspaper of record turned liberal rag, the New York Times, now asking if Prince Harry's repetitive and tiresome confessional tour has run its course. And I'm delighted to say Megan joins me now. So, Megan, is the tide turning against Harry and Megan after what is really, I think, uh, the biggest own goal in publishing history, actually, when yeah. it comes to this book? I think the answer to your question is yes. And I think the reason is people like you, like me, some others have been paying attention to these too, very closely. I mean, in detail for the past couple of years. And if you do that, you grow to dislike them. And now they have insisted that everyone pay close attention to them over the past couple of months between her podcast and the Netflix doc, quote unquote, documentary, and now this media tour around his book. And they're seeing exactly what you and I have seen. If you if you just pay attention, you see their pettiness, their vindictiveness, their complete, how completely out of touch they are. And you mentioned the New York Times this is uh, by a reporter, the London correspondent, Sarah, L- uh, Sarah L- Lyle, who called them repetitive and tiresome and said the tide seems to be turning. Something's changed. Um, there are only so many revelations the public can stomach. But the review hit, the New York Times review of the book hit today, uh, referring to Harry as embittered, saying these two might just finally be overexposed, using terms like boring, cringy, catty, tiresome to describe what it read, uh, the, the Times, in reviewing this book. And then you look at something like the Daily Beast, which is reliably left popular online site for liberals over here. And I'll give you a sample of what they said. Um, petty, mean-spirited, hugely hypocritical, critical, tawdry, petulant, spoiled, babyish, vindictive, and a simple betrayal of his family. Yeah. So well, I even the left is starting to get it. I can't disagree with that. And the other thing that I've noticed, Megan, is that they don't actually seem to be considered massive A-listers in America. I mean, I was watching Good Morning America and, OK, fine, you'd had the interview with Anderson Cooper the night before, but they actually only had the Prince Harry interview as uh, the fifth biggest story of the day uh, on their rundown. So it feels That's almost because like they've just been treated as celebs now. There's, that's exactly it. There's no news. They have nothing of substance to say. We're not turning the page and then anxiously awaiting deep thoughts from Harry on inflation. No one is. So as soon as they stop talking about the one thing that makes them interesting, which is their connection to the royal family, we're going to move on. It's already starting. There's no act two. What are they going to do? She, there's not going to be another podcast where she lectures us on why we shouldn't be using the words that Prince William used about her. I was right. The whole thing was her personal therapy session on why you shouldn't say difficult, right? It's like she's working on our own. There's not going to be another. Who who would tune into that? Netflix doesn't want to make a second movie with them. And I have to say, you know, my impression of, of this book and him in the interviews, I know I've heard the small petty man attack that he launched on you. Why did he do that? Because you reported something that was true. He was upset that, that <clears throat> excuse me, you reported about Mexip. He doesn't even deny that that was true or that your reporting was right. He's just mad you did it. And he wants to, in this delusion of grandeur, completely change the way the British press works. Well, we don't we aren't asking for that. Americans don't want that. The Brits don't want that. We want what to snuff out true reporting that Mm -hmm. gets ahead of the subject and steals the spotlight or the headline from him making it personally. Sorry, that's not the way the press works. That's not the way journalism works. So we're not rooting for you. Leaks like the one you got or however you got that story are to the benefit of the public. They're on Mm -hmm. your side, not on his side. And by the way, while we're on the subject of small petty man, as I recall, you haven't written a book talking about your penis or your brother's penis or the first time you had sex here, there or uh, elsewhere. Oh revealing God, your dad's most intimate secrets about what yeah. calms him down with his teddy bear and so on, throwing every member of your family under the bus with deep, intimate, personal conversations that you have been railing about being told about you, but you do it in your own book, throwing all your family under the bus, ripping on your own grandmother within months of her death and trying to tear apart her whole family. You know what that is? That's small and petty. Yeah, I couldn't believe that he 
has gone for the Queen, the late Queen. That shocked yeah. me. Uh, also, Megan, I just wanted to ask you what you made of this massive rowing back on all of the racism claims. So, so they, they, they spent two years allowing the entire world to think that there is some royal racist at the top of the institution. And then all of a sudden, Harry says, hang on a moment. Uh, we've never accused the royal family of racism. When I mean, we saw what Meghan said to Oprah Winfrey, do you think this illustrates some sort of split between Meghan and Harry? Or have they realised, holy cow, we went too far? I'm going to guess the latter. I don't I think he's woke, too. He's just as annoying as she is. This is what the book reveals. Just as annoying and has been for a long time and is obsessed with his public image, obsessed his stupid complaints. I mean, we could go on forever. By the way, speaking again of petty, he's mad that his room was smaller than Prince William's. Has anybody out there ever had an older sibling? Hello, all of us who are third on the scale or oh, second yeah. on the scale understand. That's how it works. It has nothing Ask to do with you being sister. a stupid spare. Right. It's always the way it is. But I think on the Oprah racism thing, uh, they they did realize that they went too far. But let's let's take it. Let's take it um, at its word. OK, that they didn't mean to allege racism. Where was the correction of all the press narrative the next day? Why didn't they come? They have a powerful microphone. They could have gone through Omid Scobie, their stenographer. There were many ways to correct the record. They didn't. When they took their award a month ago for fighting racism in the royal family here in New York, did they stand up and say, you've got it? You're not a little a off. No, not ex no, they loved being bathed in accolades for calling out truth to power, racism in the royal family. And what they're telling us now, just like so much in his book, is an obvious lie. Indeed. Well, look, Megan, I could speak to you about this all day. And the great news is tomorrow I'm going to be doing so on your brilliant yes. Megan Kelly show, uh, which is, of course, on Sirius XM. But if you're in the UK, you're going to be able to check it out. Uh, on YouTube or as a podcast. So I cannot wait to speak to you then, Megan, because we've got so Same. much more to go at here. So I'll see you.